Joining me now is writer and broadcaster Esther Kraku. Esther, Harry is never far from controversy, as we well know. Some of it's de deserved and, well, some's a little over the top. He did cop some criticism, though, this week over a recorded video tribute to Sergeant First Class Elizabeth Marks, who was named Soldier of the Year by the Military Times. Now, what was this kerfuffle all about? So the kerfuffle was in, in, for two reasons, mainly. The, the uh, medals he chose to wear um, for this remote uh, presentation of the award, he, he wore the basically three of the Queen's uh, Jubilee uh, medals, so her platinum and, and so forth. And then he wore his um, operational officer, um, operational award for his time in Afghanistan. Um, now people are questioning why he didn't wear the, the medal that he got for coming to the king's coronation. Um, people are saying that's a snub to the king and he's trying to create, you know, create a clear line between his life pre uh, the, the queen and before he fled to the US with, with Meghan and after when his father became king. Now we're not sure. Obviously it's hard to tell whether these kinds of moves are calculated by the Sussexes because that would um, require us to give them a degree of, of, of uh, intelligence and, and cleverness um, that many people are not necessarily willing to give them. The other controversy was why Prince Harry was the one presenting this award. You know, he's not an American soldier. Obviously, he has a relationship with with the recipient, um, with with Sergeant, um, but with Sergeant Marks. But he isn't an American soldier. This is kind of the highest award um, that you can get. This lady is a five time Paralympian athlete, uh, um, champion, and she's I think a four time uh, Invictus Game uh, winner as well. So. Yes, they do have a relationship somewhat, but people are saying that they're better people to, to, to give her that award as opposed to Prince Harry. Um, some are accusing the, the, the Military Times of just using his his name for, for popularity, for propaganda, for clout, that sort of thing. They, they feel like it's an insult and they're more deserving people to hand out this award. Um, and obviously there's controversy about you know Prince Harry's time in Afghanistan. He's obviously, he was at the time the third in line to the throne. People are saying that he wasn't in any real danger. Um, so he may not be the best person to have actually been, to, to vouch for, for, for the war in Afghanistan and, and being a serviceman there. Again, that's all down to speculation. Um, but th these are the main reasons why. I mean, Prince Harry has made it very clear that he he was sad to give up his 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 um, his mil military sort of accolades and his ties in the military when he left the royal family. It's something that he's been very vocal about, and his ties to the Invictus Games has kind of been his way of of still giving back to the community. But whenever you have these sorts of things, there's always going to be criticisms about why Harry, why is he choosing to wear the kind of regalia that he is? You know, this is someone that wasn't allowed to wear his military uniform for the king's coronation because that's an honor reserved only for working royals and i'm sure that wasn't uh something that he was very f happy with especially because it was basically him and and the disgraced prince andrew that that were not in any sort of regalia and still on harry and there are whispers that the ceo of the invictus games is attempting to ease harry out is that true or is that just the function of an organization becoming more established I think it's it's more the latter than the former. So Mike Tyndall, uh, who is uh, Prince Harry's cousin-in-law, effectively, has been made a patron of the Invictus Games. Uh, now he's he's not, you know, obviously Prince Harry. He didn't start the Invictus Games, but he has been made a patron of it. And people are saying maybe this is a move towards kind of detoxifying the brand because everywhere Meghan and Harry goes, there's always some sort of noise or controversy or you know they they've not really endeared themselves to the public so there's always going to be a, a certain degree of negative press that comes with it people are always skeptical that they're doing what they're doing to make more netflix dollars or to enrich themselves or to whinge more about their their their, their loss in life um but i don't think that that's the case i think prince harry has been very clear that he's very dedicated to the invictus games because it's basically the last remnant of his of his life um as a working royal um, and I, I'm sure it's something that he holds dear. He seems very dedicated to 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 military servicemen. Some of his actions have have been uh, quite peculiar in that respect, particularly talking about his his Taliban kill count, which many um, former um, army military veterans have said that's a huge no no. That's very grotesque and crass. Crass, but. You know, Prince Harry has, has made it very clear, at least vocally, that he is dedicated to the Invictus game. So I don't think even if they wanted to push him aside, they will. He is coming to the UK in May for the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. And that's going to be you know, another. Uh, there's going to be another question mark there. Is it, you know, is he going to reconcile with his family? What's going, what's the relationship going to be like with his family? Obviously, the Invictus Games is something that was he was allowed to start 
because of the royal family, he did have a lot of help from his brother when he he first launched it. So now that the relationship has has basically broken down, the questions about what what is he going to do here? Or, rightly so, what is his relationship with the Invictus Games going to be? Are the royal family can they say that this is no longer something that he can he can deal with? We don't know. And last week on the show, we talked about Megan releasing her strawberry jam product as part of American Riviera Orchard. And the discussion this week has turned to which celebrities received it. Do we know who they are? Yeah, so she sent it to, to a whole host of celebrities, the likes of Kris Jenner, Mindy Kaling, um, Tracy Ellis Ross, the daughter of Diana Ross, who's uh, now a well-known actress. Um, so she sent it to kind of the who's who of Hollywood. Some of them went on her podcast, uh, the, the doomed... Um, eventually failed podcast by um, Spotify that she had before it was cancelled. Um, and and so, you know, she's trying to subtly create some buzz. These people putting on their social media saying, thank you so much for, for our jam, Megan. We've never had jam before. Um, is it, kind of drumming up the hype that they would like. There's obviously been a bit of a competition um, indirectly with, with the, the royal family's uh, jam, the jam that they sell, and, and Megan's jam. People are saying uh, people, there's been an uptick in sales, basically, for the royal family's jam because people People, uh, prefer to support uh, the royal family's uh, products as opposed to Megan's products. Even though Megan's jam isn't on the market, she's just sending it to celebrities to, to create buzz. Um, and you know, we'll see where it goes. This is it, it's it's a bit strange that she kind of went from a working role, even though she wasn't in that position for to, for long, to kind of like a Martha Stewart, you know, influencer type uh, wannabe. Uh, it, sh it should be an interesting transition. I'm sure people are, are waiting to see what she does with the brand. American Riviera Orchard, though, is quite a mouthful. Um, I don't know who advised her on that name, but it, it sounds like some sort of series or it's just, it's just, I don't, I don't, I think she could have chosen a better name. Yeah. And I did not have Battle of the Jams on my bingo card for 2024, but anyway, uh, Royal Family News is the gift that absolutely keeps on giving, but still on American Riviera Orchard. And I do agree. It's an absolute mouthful. We understand that Megan is struggling to find a CEO for the venture. Yeah, so apparently there have been a few candidates that have been um, considered for the role. Um, again, it's it's not surprising because, you know, Megan, I don't think she has the skills equipped to be the CEO. She'll probably just, you know, be the face of the brand. Um, since she and Harry moved moved on from, from the UK, it's clear that the, the only role they can carve out for themselves is some sort of influencer type role where they lend their names and they're soon, I suspect, to be defunct titles um, to anything that they, they, they do. Um, Apparently, they've been struggling to recruit a CEO. They've they've interviewed a few people. I have this sneaking suspicion that Megan wants to hire like a woman of color. I, I don't know why. It just seems like something that's very on brand for her. Um, and so she's kind of looking for the right PR fit as well for for the CEO for this role. Um, it, it's curious which kind of person will, will take it on. Um, you know, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's lifestyle brand Goop um, also has a, a CEO as well. So it's not something that's unusual, but I'll just, it, it, we're just waiting to see how this kind of evolves.